So what I want to explain today is the materials I use. Uh, I use I, I use virtually all the time. I use a pallet box to keep my pallet in, and this tablet of pallet paper. It's Gray Matters pallet paper. It's gray. It fits right inside this. Here I'll show you. I'll show you mine. I've got mine sitting right here. Mine's a little more beat up than that one. But see, I have all of my colors laid out on here. So I can do all my mixing, I can do all my playing with my colors. When I finish, I can, I'll scrape the paint, I'll pull this sheet out, set it aside, transfer the paint to a new sheet, and then my palette is completely clean and ready to start again. Now one of the advantages of this is if you don't paint for a while, you can put this lid on, if you don't get too much paint up in the crevices, you can seal this lid back on, put it in the freezer and your paint's fresh the next time you want to next time you want to paint. The colors that I use I use viridian. Not you know whatever you don't get viridian hue. It's usually a phthalo. But I use I've got viridian for my warm blue. I know it looks green, but if you put some white in that and start doing some low low altitude sky, it'll take on a really nice aqua look. I use, this is my warm blue. For my warm red, I use cadmium red light. <clears throat> for my, uh, for my uh, warm yellow, I use cadmium yellow light. Uh, on my cool side, I use a lemon yellow. I use alizarin crimson for my cool red. And I use ultramarine blue for my cool blue. Now, what I've got laid out here is, is Winton pigments. They're, they're a student grade pigment, but from what I've found with teaching as many years as I have, Winton is probably about the best student grade pigment out there. Uh, and, it's, and it's substantially cheaper than buying the real professional pigments, although go ahead and get those if you can, or if you want to. Also, <clears throat> with the Winton brand, I use soft mixing white. Uh, most titanium white, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's good paint, but most of it is so thick it's like painting with library paste. Uh, the titanium has a, has a percentage of zinc in it, and the zinc soft, it makes the paint soft and creamy and really easy to paint with. Uh, it's, you know, it's the same creaminess as most of your colors down here. For my paint medium, I use, I use liquid. Uh, it's a, it's a petroleum-based product. It mixes really well with the paint. It speeds up the paint a little bit in drying, so your painting will take maybe a few days to dry instead of a few weeks to dry. Now, when I start a painting, I put out a little cup, and I put, and I put, a, 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 I put some liquid in the cup. What you use the liquid for is to put a little bit in, the, in your paint to get it to the consistency you like to paint with. It, it, it makes the paint a little bit transparent, it makes the paint stick to the canvas better, uh, and, it's, uh, and it helps the painting, it helps the paint to flow better. Now I, I don't ever use paint thinner to thin my paints. I use the liquid to, to thin my paints with. My, uh, my brushes, I, I use odorless paint thinner. Now you also need just an old soup can to pour your thinner into. Uh, I only use the thinner for cleaning brushes. I don't use it in my paint. Once you, you, you fill the can up, you know, probably a can that size, fill it half full of thinner. When you're through with it, have a jug that you pour it back into. So th this, this right here is just an old orange juice jug that I pour my thinner back into. And see, if I pull it, pour it back out, see, it's, it's clear. And th this is just old, old, dirty thinner. And then I, you know, my, my cans that I keep my brush in, I squeeze the edge like that so that then I can, when I'm through painting, I can just pour it right back into the jug. All of that sludge settles to the bottom. Like this jug right now, the sludge is up to about here. Everything from there up to about here is clear thinner. And I can just keep reusing it, reusing it, and reusing it. From the bottom, when that when that sludge gets you know halfway up the jar, then take it to a chemical disposal place, and that's all I use my paint thinner for is to clean my brushes. My palette knife, I, I use I have a, a little I don't know how to describe this. It's a uh, 
Chason 844, it's, it's, it's staggered. It's, it has an elbow that bends and comes down to these triangles. So these flat edges, I'm able to scoop paint up really cleanly. And then also with this bend coming down, I'm able to mash paint. When I'm mixing colors, I'm able to mash it around. Uh, my brushes, I use filberts. I, I just use filberts only. They're a flat brush, but they're not straight across the top. The, the, the brights and flats that are chopped across the top leave, to me, a lot of uncomfortable ridges in the paint, which I don't like. These, these help to soften the edges of, the, of your colors really well. And uh, I would usually, starting out, my, my students, I start them out with a size 2, a size 4, and a size 6. Then I also have a 1-inch chip brush. And the 1-inch chip brush is I take a little tiny bit of my uh, warm mud that I mix here, and I put a lot of liquid glaze in it, and I put that on my canvas and wipe it down. That gives me a nice, a nice uh, wet surface to start working on. Now, if you've got any, if you've got colors already, you know, by all means use what you've got. But if you, if you're just getting started and you have to buy everything, uh, I've I've worked a thing with Quality Arts. Uh, they're a, they're a they're a, a large wholesaler, uh, and uh, they have a kit that's made up for the class. And what is that? Uh, I think you you go to you go to QualityArt.biz. And the, 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 the stock number is uh, Choate-Kit, C-H-O-A-T-E-K-I-T. And, the, and I, I don't know the exact price on it, but I know it's a substantial discount uh, to, to buy the whole set that way. You know, I, I, I dreamed of being a painter all my life, and uh, I finally got started in my 50s. And it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I, I, I can't say it's enjoyable all the time. It's challenging, it's frustrating, it's ecstatic, it's, it's all of the above. It's, it's, if you can get into it and really, really pursue it, it the, the method I'm teaching is quite simple, but it's pretty difficult to master. It may be one of the most difficult things you ever do, but it'll also be one of the most rewarding things you ever do. Just imagine if you're doing paintings, I mean, you can, you can do your paintings, uh, you know, Sitting in, a, sitting in a bed or sitting in a wheelchair, you can still paint as long as you've got a little bit of your brain left and, uh, and you see your arms and hands, you can do this. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great skill to carry into old age and I'm getting there pretty fast.